what are we afraid of? Okay, the comment was we are, don't want to be disappointed. Well, I've written a book, What is Love? And one of the things that I found, because going through two marriages and being a divorce attorney for many years, was that most people have no idea what love is. And when they say, I love you, that's probably the most vague thing you can possibly say to somebody. Because you have an idea of what you mean when you say, I love you. But you have to understand what that other person thinks about love, understands about love, perceives about love, because you may be saying the absolute the worst thing you could possibly say to somebody when you say, I love you. Now, you can say, I care for you. You can say, I support you. You can say, I want the best for you. And however, that person on the other end of that statement may hear that as being, I want to have sex with you, because that's what they think love is. Or they may hear that, okay, I, that means you'll support me financially for the rest of my life because that's what their understanding of love is because they, they're, that's the way our parents were or that's the way Hollywood has portrayed it for us or that's the way the most recent self-help book <clears throat> defined it for you. Love is the most misunderstood word, I think, in the English language because people say one thing and mean another. I, when they say, I love you, they may very well mean, I want to control you. I need somebody to control, to feel like I have power over somebody. Or it may mean, like I said, I want to have sex with you. Or it may mean that I need somebody to beat up on a regular basis to make myself feel better about myself. So when somebody says, I love you, the best thing that you can say to them is, what do you mean by that? Because you have to come to have an understanding, an agreement with them, what that is that they're saying. Because how often do we say to somebody, I love you, and they say, I love you back, and then you have the fight of the century because neither one of you understood what the other meant when they said, I love you. And so we have probably one of the most distracting things in the universe going on in our lives is this whole concept of love. We all want it because it makes us feel good if we get it, but we have to get it in a form that we like it. In other words, one of the... <clears throat> misconceptions that I labored under for many, many years was that my parents didn't love me. Because whenever I heard the word love, I love you, I, had, I usually ducked. Because it was immediately preceding a, a spanking. And so what I learned growing up is, is that love was dangerous. And so when somebody said, I love you, I run away. I don't want anybody to love me if it means it's going to hurt. And so, is it any wonder I've had two divorces? Because <laughs> they say, I love you, and I'll run away. Or they would say something unkind. But that's because my understanding of love was, that's what love is. You get abused. So, I was laboring under this misconception with my parents because they spanked me, because they didn't give me what I wanted, because they had their own lives, and sometimes that meant being hung over or whatever, and they didn't want to deal with a, you know, a real ratty six-year-old kid. I didn't you know, understand that I had to love them back. And so... <clears throat> 
I am sure without any, without any doubt in my mind that my parents loved me. It just wasn't the way I wanted to be loved. I remember my father told me one time, is, I'm not your best friend, I'm your father. And so I grew up with this image that the father was supposed to be a dictator. The father, he was in the military, and as everybody calls him the general. And because he gives orders, and if you don't follow the orders, then here comes the hailstorm or the firestorm. Imagine growing up with that as a little child. And so the thing is, is that that was another misunderstanding that I have about love. You all can look back on your own childhood and probably identify some of the misconceptions you might have about the word love because that's the way you were treated as a child. I think one of the, <laughs> I have to laugh, one of the, one of the biggest lies I was ever told by my father is this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> and my thought was no, I don't think so. As he's coming at me with a belt, I don't think so. However, I think the fact is that it probably did hurt him because he did not want to hurt his child. But he had this mindset going, having been brought up through the Depression, that you have to discipline your children, spare the rod and spoil the child. And I think that that was another lie that his generation had to deal with. <clears throat> and we go back and forth about this as far as parenting skills, about whether how to discipline children, how to deal with unruly children, how to deal with children who are acting inappropriately. And as we go along, we kind of go from one side of the spectrum of let them do whatever they want to no, you got to keep them on a tight leash kind of thing. But somewhere along that line, that, that spectrum of let them do what they want and know they got to be disciplined, there's love in there. And so your version of love just depends on where you are on this spectrum of how do you treat your children. And because, however, we were treated that's how we learn to treat children. There's a great Buddhist saying that says we are not our parents' children, nor are we our children's parents. And what that means is, is that parents have to understand that it's not their responsibility every time a child acts out. Because children, as, especially as they get older and become adults, they have the ability to make choices. And you could be the best parent in the world and you're going to have a child that makes questionable choices. Or you could have had the best parents in the world and your choices were probably in their eyes not as great or not a good decision and you've had to suffer the consequences. But that's life.